All right. So uh, it is a Saturday morning. Uh, let's talk laser jammers. So uh, this weekend, I've got some laser jammer testing coming up. So a bunch of different laser jammers, a bunch of different laser guns. Um, I just posted a video of as far as uh, the different custom installed radar detectors. Uh, that is up on my channel now. So you can uh, take a look at the testing I did last weekend. Uh, and I uh, kind of want to, since we're going live, we can talk about that, uh, more information, discussion, see how all that stuff went. But I also want to go ahead and start talking about uh, laser jammer testing. So um, I've got, I've kind of cleaned up my office a little bit. You can see I've kind of tucked some stuff back there, but uh, laser guns have been arriving. Uh, laser jammers have been arriving. Hey, what's up, Jag? So actually, let's start with the jammers, or sorry, let's start with the laser guns. So we've got uh, the Stalker XLR. Uh, this is cool. It's the first time I've actually ever held one. It's a pretty compact and uh, beefy gun. Um, it's cool. Got the audio Doppler when you're shooting it. Pretty cool. I had to read over the manual to learn all the kind of cryptic uh, menu settings and stuff. So we got the XLR. Uh, I'm going to have two Dragon Eye Speed LiDARs. Uh, so the uh, the bigger ones. I've got uh, a compact as well. So there's going to be one compact and there's going to be two of these uh, Dragon Eye Speed LiDARs. I've got one here. Another one is going to be showing up on test day. I've got uh, what's long been pretty much my favorite gun, uh, the True Speed S, super compact, tiny. I love this uh, 7X scope on here. Um, yeah, great little gun. So this would be fun. I'd like to get one of these to add to my collection. Uh, and then I'm also going to be testing with the uh, Pro Laser 3. So a PL3. I've got my LRB sitting over there. Um, I don't really have a good reason to test with it. It's not going to really, um, I guess, tell us all that much. It's a pretty straightforward and easy gun. Uh, I'd rather kind of test with the PL3 because it's a much more commonly used gun. Um, but I'm sure most everything is going to be able to jam the LRB, and I'm sure the uh, the PL3 as well. It's kind of once we start getting into some of the newer and tougher guns, the uh, True Speed S, the Stalker XLR, uh, and the different versions of the Dragon Eye. There's many, many different versions of the, uh, the Dragon Eye. So I almost got a True Speed S the other day pick up an extra true speed S battery. I might have to do that. Yeah, I was thinking about picking up some more uh, AAAs and stuff. Um, I know it's like a, one of those little button cell batteries or something. I'll have to mess with it later. I forget what off the top of my head. So that'll be good. No tickets with the R3. Awesome, good to hear that, Jeremy. So a uh, bunch of stuff. As far as the jammers, um, CR123A. Man, you guys are on it, thank you. I'll have to go run by the drugstore. So that's actually something I've been getting ready in the meantime. So uh, batteries, uh, cameras I've been getting. I picked up a whole bunch of walkie-talkies for testing. Uh, the way I want this testing to work, and actually, before I explain why I got the walkie-talkies, let's talk about the laser jammers. So, um, ALP, obviously. I'm going to be testing a set of triples, three regular heads up front. I'm going to be testing two regular and one TX head. I have the ability to switch combinations. Uh, I've got uh, Perspex covers, that kind of uh, black plastic that does allow infrared light to transmit through. I'm going to test with uh, the covers on and off. Uh, I've got ALP triples on the rear and uh, removable perspex there, so I might as well test out the rear of my car. Um, I've got the Stinger VIP fibers, which actually they're laying right here. Grab these. So these just arrived. Uh, I wish they had actually arrived when I was getting all the install stuff done on my car. Um, so here's the new, uh, what do they call it? Not the laser center, but like I guess the laser computer or whatever they're calling it. Tons and tons of ports here. So transmits on this side, receives on that side, micro and mini USB ports. Um, and then the fibers, here's a quick look at them before I get them installed in my car. So uh, you've got the USB port here for them to plug into the, uh, the laser center thing. And then here's the fibers. Uh, the design is a little bit different than I saw with the uh, previous gen ones. So the heads are a little bit different. They're super, super tiny, as you can see. One is transmit, one's receive. I forget exactly which, but uh, this one I noticed it has four cables coming out of the back of the head, whereas the other one, once transmit, once receive again, has just one. So kind of something new. Um, can you do a pop test? No, pop is pretty much irrelevant. There's not a point really to test pop, but it detects it, so whatever, Kendall. Um, so we've got uh, the laser jamming stuff. So this is something that I want to go install in my car. Uh, because they're so tiny and I already had the Stinger VIP already, it would have been cool to get this installed in my car, but instead I'm just going to be doing a quick, like, tape job almost, which is kind of unfortunate because these are really tiny and stealthy hidden looking jammers. And so it'd be awesome to have them permanently installed and just wired into my Stinger VIP, but they only just arrived this week. And so I'm going to be doing a quick test, just putting them in my car. One interesting thing I found out is the heads are actually supposed to be tilted up like five degrees, not perfectly straight and level. So that's kind of interesting. But anyway, let's go set this down. Uh, so after live streaming, I'm going to go install those, uh, I've got the K40s laying in uh, one of those bags back there. So I've got a diffuser optics triple. 
So I'm going to be doing that. Uh, I've got the TMG installed in my car, just updated to 8.05. Uh, so that one will be a good one to test just to see how it does. Close range punch throughs. Can it handle all these guns as well? Um, once I get that, I'd like to do an updated video, of course, on all the top laser jammers, all that kind of stuff. So what have we done? Stinger, ALP, TMG. I've got another one, uh, another laser jammer that's going to be announced next week, I believe. And so I'm going to be testing it out. I've got a retail production copy. Uh, some of the initial ones a manufacturer has, they've just sent them out to different testers, um, people who do this kind of stuff. So I got one of them. And uh, yeah, I'll be testing it and then it'll be announced next week. So that'll be a cool one. And then I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, the Escort, right. That's installed on my car too. Uh, the Escort Shifter Max. Yeah, so Escort's newest, uh, latest and greatest jammer. I've got a set of triples of those installed on my car. I'm really curious to see if Escort um, is gonna go ahead and release a new firmware update. I know they've been working on uh, Dragonite updates. And uh, when we were getting the install done on my car, they were like, hey, you know, when do you plan on testing it? We're working on updates. Uh, and they're, of course, hoping that uh, I would wait, and I've been waiting for a little while for the update to come out um, because I want to have the latest and greatest hardware and software for everything, you know? It would kind of suck to go out and test, and then, like, the next day there's an update that comes out that renders all of my results invalid, kind of like with the TPX. I tested with the prototype, remember? And then I'm like, all that time and energy and work and I can't use the results, you know? So I want the latest and greatest. And so I've kind of been like, hey, you know, is the update coming? All that kind of stuff. I haven't seen an update yet. Um, I know there's an update recently for the uh, windshield mounts, the Max 360C. People mentioned that's available over Wi-Fi, speaking of which, for those of you guys who have it. Um, but I know they're working on it. I don't know if it's gonna be available in time. Um, but anyway, I'll test with a set of Escort triples and we'll see how it does. Uh, let's see. Something I'm concerned about is with my install, the uh, heads are slightly recessed into the grill because the grill is kind of shaped at an angle and the heads are kind of back a little bit. And so kind of at the bottom of the grill, it sticks out a little bit past the front of the heads. Now I've seen that sometimes that can cause an issue as far as reflections off the grill coming back uh, and well, actually causing problems for the uh, the jammer itself due to the installation, not due to the jammer. And I'm a little bit concerned that uh, maybe it's possible that my car could cause some problems for the jammer. And it was kind of something we talked about during the install of like they're slightly recessed, not a lot, but a little bit. If we stuck them out more, they would really stick out and it wouldn't really look good at all, especially with having the uh, removable Perspex covers on the front. But I'm hoping that it works. If it doesn't, then it might be something I'm going to have to go back and uh, actually adjust and get fixed later on down the line. But Something I actually just thought of this morning. Uh, there's going to be a couple people actually coming to help me test, and that's actually where those walkie-talkies come into play. Uh, I'd like to have one person driving the car. I'd like to have shooters on either end. So I drive this direction. I'm getting shot with whoever is holding this gun. Turn around, come back. I'm getting shot by somebody else in this direction. And because I've got so many jammers, so many guns, I think it's something like 150 passes that we're going to do. And that's not counting if, in case anything goes wrong, or sometimes we want to do a normal pass, just you know, holding the gun, and then I'm going to want to do it on camera again, uh, which can be a little bit trucky, to, trucky, tricky to keep the uh, the camera mounted or the laser gun mounted in front of the lens. Um, it's just going to be a lot of time. But something I was thinking is there's going to be a number of people there, like me is my name, uh, one another guy on the forums, uh, somebody else who just messaged me. So we're all going to be meeting up. And I believe most of you guys have jammers in your car as well. And in case I see anything weird on my car due to my install, uh, some other people who are also going to be there with jammers, we can test on theirs to see, does it perform differently? Does it perform better or worse? I don't know. So just, again, as always, getting as much data as possible to get as complete of a picture as possible. And I don't want my install to potentially cause any issues. And so I want to make sure I can kind of rule out install-related stuff versus jammer-related stuff. So... That's something that should definitely help in case that comes up and it's something that we see causing unexpected results. So uh, yeah, that should be good. So meeting up tomorrow, um, today pretty much, I just kind of want to chit chat as far as a live stream. I got to get the stingers installed. I got to get uh, the K40s installed as well as these uh, new jammers installed. So that should be pretty simple. It'll just be like double stick tape right to the grill. Uh, I have to get them kind of, of course, leveled and aligned and stuff, and then just run the cables into the cabin and there we go. Um, I will not be testing the LTI TrueCam 2. Um, I don't have one, not testing with the TrueCam. I've never actually shot a TrueCam. It's pretty much a standard LTI gun though, just with a camera attached to the side. So I guess not too much. I mean, I guess I could test with the LRB, but 
No. If you want to see TrueCam stuff, maybe post on the forums. Maybe somebody else could test. I think the ALP has been tested about with it, and I've seen it, and it's fine. I don't think there's anything particularly difficult with the TrueCam as far as jamming. It's just a laser gun with a camera attached to it. So, uh, In the meantime, I'm just kind of getting uh, all the jammers updated. Make sure they're set with uh, unlimited jam time, no automatic JTK. Uh, that's how you run it, of course, in practice, but for testing, we want to make sure it can jam far away, mid-range, close range, all of the above. But yeah, um, I guess one of the biggest things now is, um, well, besides getting the uh, the jammers installed, it's also finding a good location for the test. Um, I need something that, you know, it's a nice long straightaway, right? No trees and stuff blocking parts of the course or hills or dips and stuff. So be able to lock the car the whole time. I need a good turnaround spots so to get to one end, turn around, go the other way, turn around again, and we keep going back and forth. There needs to be convenient places to turn around the car, uh, safe spots for the shooters to be on either end. Um, and since we'll be out there for a while, maybe sitting in their cars instead of just standing outside. Uh, so a safe place for the shooters to stand, something that's not too busy with traffic or people. Um, so I kind of need something that checks all the right boxes. I haven't found anything yet. I wish I had something awesome, but, uh, 2,500 feet is ideal. Uh, yeah, I was thinking in order to do that, maybe like an industrial park somewhere. So after this, got to get the install done. Um, I'm supposed to like not work too, too much today. Uh, worked all week getting all the uh, the testing stuff done for the remotes. Um, today, it's going to be kind of like a chill day. I While well, my wife is doing like a pregnancy yoga thing right now, I'm live streaming and I'm going to work on the install. I don't know if I'm going to have a ton of time to go out and scout locations today or any time. We'll see. I wish I had all the time in the world to go out and do like the greatest thing possible and have all the money in the world to get every gun and every jam, you know, so it's always a balance, right? How much time do you devote to testing and how many runs do you do and how many jammers do you put in and how many guns do you use? So it's always, I guess, trying to find the best balance to do as much as possible without, well, overloading myself or getting too burned out. So <laughs> anyway, I guess one of the nice things about laser jammer testing is uh, one of the people that I want on site, and I guess that's why I got the walkie talkies, uh, one walkie talkie for the driver, a pair of walkie talkies for the people in uh, holding the guns. And then like, so we'll drive, broop, no report, you know, jammed a gun or I got to punch through at 412 feet or whatever. And then I'm going to have another person, a fourth person actually logging uh, the results and saying, uh, okay, so this was a uh, jammer blah. Uh, this was a passenger headlight shot against this particular gun. Here's the results. And then we log it. And then by the time we're done with testing, all the results are there. And then it's going to be really easy to post the results as opposed to the radar detector testing, which is a lot more involved, having to rewatch all the runs and see on camera, you know, when does the detector alert? And then what does the phone say as far as the times and having to match all that? And, you know, that's pretty time consuming as opposed to you just get home and all the results are in a spreadsheet, it's done. So that'll help. And then getting all the results online, on the forums, on my website, on YouTube, at least that part will be faster. The trickiest thing, I think, besides like, I still need to get a really good test course. Um, the other thing would be able to, uh, what was I going to say? I was reading the comments, then I forgot what I was going to say. So besides the test course, oh yeah, it's also getting on camera views of the runs. So it's easy to like hold the gun steady like this, right? Um, it's tougher when you're trying to like hold a phone here or mount it in front of the SLR. Like um, here, let me grab a couple mounts and stuff. So a couple things for that. And you guys who have more experience than me with this, uh, I would love to hear your uh, your input and suggestions. So I know Jag sent over with his uh, TrueSpeed S and uh, his Drag and I phone mount. So basically, you got this guy. It attaches to the uh, the eyepiece like this, and then you just attach your phone here, and then put the camera right there. And so while you're shooting, um, it's nice and secure, which is great. I did notice the. Uh, this thing rotates, and so you just kind of have to like lock it into position when it holds there. Um, but I think with a little bit of practice and maybe resting this on a another tripod or something, I can grab one that I normally use for my lights or something. I can get a pretty stable uh, video for this. Something I've done in the past, uh, GoPros are a little bit tough to do because the screen is so small, it's almost impossible to see the crosshair uh, and see what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, something that I've had better luck with is doing this. And I got this camera going. Um, I've got the bigger screen here on top. And here, I'll just kind of show you real quick. It's got batteries in it and stuff. Turn this on. So 
didn't the old dragon eyes like the laser allies i thought they had a hole on top or something for uh what's it called uh like sticking a gopro in there but something else would be kind of like let's see doing this sort of thing and then just kind of holding it so i would do this and then get it aligned and so i'm pretty much doing that and you guys can see here so it's just kind of like holding the gun this way so maybe that'll work as a technique we'll see be good to actually go out and practice this a little bit more too and so kind of what i found is experimenting with this in the past is oh, here's another uh eyepiece mount that doesn't have quite the adjustability that i would want so i think i'm just going to return it so thanks jack for sending yours uh yeah so that's going to be something to figure out as far as the best ways to get this on camera and it's tougher to get um good videos showing the guns in action, it's much easier to actually hold them the way that they're intended to be held and test that way. But I definitely wanna still get runs of being like, okay, if I get jammed to gun performance, let's show that on camera. If I get punch throughs, let's show that on camera. It can be a little bit tougher to keep the camera super steady so that I get similar results on camera. Um, use my knee or the car door. Yeah, that should be helped. Don't drink a ton of coffee. No promises there. I'm definitely gonna be drinking my, my coffee. But, uh, um, yeah, that's gonna be th something that's like to get good results on video that also are similar to what I get when I'm shooting handheld. And then just of course make it look good because well, YouTube and stuff, it's fun to actually have videos of showing all this. So yeah, where's my dog? He's over over there uh, just asleep on the ground or in his little bed, so, which is nice. He'll probably at some point, I'm sure wanna hop up into my lap, but yeah, I got a dog, he's awesome. Scooped out a little spot, 2,500 feet with zero traffic. Um, oh, that would be great. Yeah, if you got a spot like that, that sounds like a great testing location, Ross. Napster 6, when does the auto lockout patent expire? I believe it's like June or July or something. I forget off the top of my head, but it's going to be coming up. So, um, yeah, so anyway, that's kind of the gist as far as the, uh, the testing. It'll, of course, take some time to, well, not only do the testing, but then uh, go online afterwards to post the results. Uh, Monday is Memorial Day, so I'm not going to be like working on testing and stuff Monday. Uh, got other plans, plus the holiday. Yay! And then I'll kind of get back to work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday as far as getting the results online, uh, posting videos and blah, 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 blah. And then after that, it's like, okay, let's now that that's done, let's talk about the best laser jammers. Now that we've got a good sense of performance, I find there's definitely a difference in terms of interface, uh, features, speed of updates, price point. Uh, things like that. So kind of between like the TMG, the ALP, and the Escort jammers, those are kind of, I think, like the three best jammers. And maybe the Stinger, if that thing finally can work well. I tested the previous gen jammers. I tested their, uh, when they first had the fiber optic transmitters. And these are different. I've noticed they are different than the previous gen fiber optics. The radar side, I'm still not sold on the Stinger VIP, but maybe for the laser, like this is actually something unique and cool and you know, not everybody wants to install a big, huge laser jammer head into your grill. You know, with this kind of thing, with the little fibers, you can put them and make them invisible. You can either drill a hole into your car if it's being done professionally. You can install them into headlights. You can do it into the cracks between body panels. Like there's so many amazing install options of things that you just couldn't do with the traditional laser jammer. Excuse me. So if that works well, I think that could actually be a good option. With, as far as the ALP, obviously that's the benchmark. It's the one that everybody runs. I mean, the TMG, it's, I think, a pretty cool option. I'm not a huge fan of the interface, but it's kind of a less expensive option, even though the price of it's been going up. Um, so we'll have to see. Uh, I don't know. I mean, TMG, it's another cool option. The Escort, hopefully it's been getting better, and I guess really hopefully they've got... Uh, the laser jammer update that's supposed to be coming out soon. Hopefully they're able to get it done and release it before tomorrow or else I'm going to be testing with whatever the current firmware is. I think 1.10 on the Mac CI 360, something like that. Um, so we'll see. So those, I guess, are kind of like the three biggest ones that I'm looking at. Uh, I was also thinking I've got the ZW5s on my wife's car. It's a set of duels. Like if I've got time, I could test those in addition to everybody else who's coming, test out their cars. So things to do. Um, anyway, once the testing is done, I want to do a video going over like all the best laser jammers on the market. My old one is from like 2017 or 18 or something. And there's been a lot of updates since with new firmwares, new laser guns, new laser jammers, maybe most importantly. So it'll be good now that I got all the jammers, all the guns, everything here. I'm going to have a much better idea of how this stuff compares and be able to do a video. 
Uh, and then as far as updated uh, best radar detectors, windshield mounts, updated best uh, custom installed radar detectors, those are kind of like the big priority, big projects that I definitely want to get done before the baby is born. Uh, we're at 31 weeks now. Monday should be 32 weeks. And so probably by the time I do that, that'll take me a few weeks to get all that stuff done. We'll be really close to when the baby's born. And so I know somebody asked earlier, what about the five minute Fridays? And I'm like, I'm cutting out everything, everything to get all the big stuff done, top priority. And then I'm going to have to like go because I'm going to, well, be with the baby, you know, and not sleeping and, you know, comforting the baby. I'm going to be busy doing that. So all the extra stuff at this point is out of the picture. Um, but yeah, I mean, my list of course of stuff that I'd like to do is huge. There's so many things I still need to do tutorials on how to set up the, uh, oh, thank you, Rich. I appreciate that. Tutorials on how to set up the uh, RCM, the Pro-M, the Max CI 360, the IXC, which is on its way back, by the way. I just got the shipping notification. Uh, it should be here next week. Um, that was the one that had some issues, I think, on 34.7 in my last test. So that one finally got repaired. Uh, I still want to do videos on like how to set up the uh, the LTE stuff in your car. I've been wanting to do, what about uh, security cameras? And you know, now, there's still so much stuff that I'd want to do that I just don't have time for. So I'm pretty much just focusing on the highest priority items. Uh, and like, even after this done live streaming, let's go set up and get ready for this coming test tomorrow. So yeah, it's been a busy time, busy time. And also of course, trying to keep that balance with like, well, you got to have stuff ready for the baby and relax and enjoy yourself on the weekends and have a life and that stuff too. So, <laughs> uh, current weather in the Pacific Northwest, the weather tomorrow, it's like a 10% chance of rain. Uh, Alexa, uh, cancel. I'll just look it up this way. So the weather, yeah, it's supposed to be good. Um, if it's not too sunny, that would be good just so that people don't uh, scorch. Currently 52, be up in the 70s tomorrow. That's great. Thanks. So hopefully the weather should be uh, really nice and we'll be good there. Um, sunscreen <laughs> would probably be good. Something to grab for tomorrow. Water, I'll probably have to pick up some food and snacks and stuff for people on the way because, you know, it's testing. So I guess that's everything as far as the... Uh, the laser side radar that stuff is finally all up online 86 and human in ohio man i'm sorry um yeah so radar stuff i'm glad that stuff is getting done and then after this it's just the best radar detectors and the best laser jammers which of course everybody always wants to know um i don't it's weird i i don't like doing that stuff as much talking about what's the best because feel like that's a great question, but there's not a simple answer. And so it's tough to kind of figure out how to put everything together and present that in a simple way. Um, but I know that's something that everybody's always wondering about. And it's good to do those just from like, a, that people always wonder. So that's always good to do. Um, other than that, yeah. So just busy, busy as far as testing, uh, getting stuff prepped. It's shooters need eye protection. Yeah, got laser goggles. Um, yeah, I only have one pair though. I don't have pairs for everybody, so I could wear a blindfold. <laughs> uh, what's best is unique for every person based on the purpose of use. Yeah, exactly. And I guess that's kind of like people always ask, what's the best radar detector? What's the best three radar detectors? And it's like, well, simple question, but there's not a simple answer. So the trick is to figure out how to answer that simply. I think people are asking what's the best, but they really mean, well, which one should I get? What's the best for me? So you kind of have to like take their question and sort of redirect it based on what they're actually trying to get at, not what they're asking, which is what's the best, because there is no one singular best. It's case by case, you know, do you have MRCD? Do you want a remote? Do you need arrows? Do you need a stealth detector? Like, what do you need for your area? All that stuff, whatever. I cover that in all the other videos. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, RDF, yeah, laser goggles. So actually here, I'll grab mine while you guys are talking about laser goggles. So this is a thing too, and yeah, they, they can be helpful. So laser, I mean, it is eye safe. Uh, that's one of the things, they're governed by the FDA, it's not the FCC. Um, and the whole thing with those is they just wanna make sure it's safe for the human eye. And so uh, when cops are shooting laser guns, for example, they'll shoot all day and they don't wear protective eyewear or something and they'll shoot just people like you and me driving down the street and we don't wear protective eyewear. But it is one of those things where uh, it's good to have a pair of uh, infrared absorbing laser goggles. So you can look super nerdy and awesome. Oh, thank you, uh, Itty Corey. Hopefully I said that right, Itikori. 
So anyway, you can look awesome with a pair of snazzy goggles like this, like you're ready to go into the lab. Um, but something that I've noticed, just shooting the laser like around my office like this, after a while, my, arm, my eyes might actually start to hurt a little bit. And so it's nice to have these around. I got to make sure that my dog who's asleep over there right now, um, you know, he's not in the area. I don't want to damage his eyes. And because it's infrared light, you can't see it and your pupils don't restrict to the bright light. And so it's possible for something to, you know, if you do it a lot for them to get burned. So it's nice to have these um, just to have like the extra protection when needed. So yeah, I'll throw these into the test. I wish I had more for people, but I don't know. People have been testing for a long time. Cops use them all the time. Uh, without eyewear. And I mean, they're okay too, but I guess it's one of those things just to be extra safe. It's kind of nice to have a set of these. Uh, I have seen that some of the cheapest, cheapest ones online, they don't provide adequate protection. Like they're kind of like Rocky Mountain Radar in a sense where they'll advertise protection, but they don't actually give it to you. So it's better to get something, maybe not the cheapest ones, but I think like mid grade or higher grade or something. Um, so I had a cheap pair that I got rid of and I got something a little bit better. I think I've got Eagle pair. I believe these are the a little bit better ones. I forget. It's been a while since I've had them, but actually let me add it to my list of stuff to bring, not in my throwback in the closet box, but uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, Larry Moland, is Escort Live going to be updated to add address input? I don't know. I, I know they've released their update already. It's already available for, uh, hey, thanks Jack for the batteries. <laughs> Got to add that to the list too. Um, so Escort Live, it's had an update for uh, iOS, but not yet for Android. I haven't really messed around with the new app. I always run it backgrounded and then I just use the radar detectors display for, uh, seeing the alerts and the speed limit and all that kind of stuff. I don't use the app itself. Uh, the only thing that I really notice is because I run it backgrounded with the Mac CI 360, it connects in the background, maybe 30% of the time. Uh, it doesn't do a good job of reconnecting. I've noticed. And I also, um, am getting times when like the app just kind of crashes or something, I'll get an escort live alert on display and then it just hangs. It doesn't update as I drive. And then maybe it'll disconnect and reconnect or sometimes I'll have to go in and like restart the app manually. So I was really hoping because I run the app backgrounded that the new version would be much more reliable and consistent, but I'm not seeing that. Um, that's, I guess, a little bit of a disappointment. But as far as all the other stuff with like, it can, I believe, show arrows now. I haven't even looked. Um, but it's supposed to be able to show arrows in the display and do like direction or like GPS mapping stuff. I haven't actually messed with all that at all. But Sideswipe 1, unit in R7 or K40. Really? It's funny. Let's see. Get some batteries at Walmart. That could be good. Yeah, if I run out and just do a little bit of scouting, I can tie in a quick trip to Walmart or something or the drugstore just to pick up some more batteries. That was funny. So with Rocky Mountain Radar, I was rereading. I mean, so I was thinking about like, oh, should I get one of them? I could run the Judge 2.0 and run that like alongside the other jammers, throw it into the mix. Um, well, I'm testing tomorrow, so I don't think even with Amazon Prime, uh, I don't think I can get same day shipping on those. I'd looked it'll arrive Monday. But anyway, I'm not here to like beat up on Rocky Mountain Radar. I just kind of want to say, here's the results. Here's how it works. It doesn't work. Done. Great. So, um, I was thinking about doing that. And so anyway, I was looking it up on Amazon and it was fun. The reviews, you can tell who's like the Rocky mountain radar employees or whatever. And apparently uh, those of us who test it, I didn't know this, but those of us who test it were paid by other manufacturers to uh, talk down about their products and promote other products. So I don't know where that money is because I don't get paid by manufacturers for reviewing their products. I do affiliate commission stuff. If the Rocky Mountain Radar worked, I would be happy to link you to Amazon and I would make a percentage there just like with the other ones. I mean, if it worked, I wouldn't be spending all this time with all the jammers. I wouldn't bother with other radar detectors when I could scramble radar, you know, like common sense. There's a reason why those of us enthusiasts, if it worked, we have a ton of radar guns. We could easily verify. We can verify the laser scrambling stuff. It's not a big deal. If it worked, we'd run it ourselves we would tell you you know but apparently there's some big conspiracy of how we're paid by the radar detector and laser jammer manufacturers to talk bad about rocky mountain radar that's kind of funny <laughs> so i didn't know that that was what's going on but apparently rocky mountain radar informed me that's what they're doing with us so that was funny mercedes is going to uh do 48 volt sense systems and uh, others may how will that affect your future detector development why would it I'm not sure. Um, I mean, there's 12 volts. I guess maybe for like, it needs to be able to support higher voltage. Like I know there's some battery packs that support 24 volts for uh, running in trucks and stuff. 
Um, but if they implement 48 volt systems, I would think they still have to support 12 volts because that's standard for uh, phone chargers and GPS and cell phones and radar. I mean, that's just a super standard thing to have 12 volts. So yeah, they will be stepped on transformers. Like I know Tesla's, they run much higher voltages for their batteries and stuff, but you still have to believe have a 12 volt plug. So a big deal. Um, yeah, USB, you step down 12 volts to 5 volts. Uh, was the Audi Q5 your dream car? Not necessarily. Hey, thanks, Matthew. I appreciate it. So um, not really. I mean, I was, so actually the main reason why I wanted to get an SUV was family, baby, yay. But it turns out I love that car. I drove tons and tons of SUVs. Um, needed something, of course, that has, uh, uh, you know, a good grill for testing. Um Blah, 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 blah. Meet all the countermeasure criteria. Doesn't emit K-Ban BSMs that cause my stuff to false. And, you know, just something that's good for testing. But I also wanted something that's got tech stuff because I like that. Something comfortable. And it just drives beautifully. Oh, my gosh. It just drives incredibly. My wife loves it because now she's getting all the back pain from being pregnant. So she'll just sit back in the seat and turn on the heated seats and, like, just relax. And, excuse me. I don't know what's going on. That's burps today. <laughs> anyway. She loves the seats. That's like one of her favorite things. I love how it drives. I mean, more power than the Miata. It's, you sit up higher. You can honk the horn and people actually hear you. They'll see you. That's a plus. <laughs> but I love driving it. So it's it's awesome. I mean, it'd be nice to maybe one day get an SQ5 or something. I see those going by. But I know they got like stiffer seats and more bolstering, whereas the Q5, it's more comfortable and soft. And I do like that. So I don't know. Chip it, whatever. That's a whole other thing. But yeah, I'm a big fan of the uh, the Q5. It's awesome. Like. I now see them all over the place and I can see why, but uh, Michael Churchman can't back up the claims he makes of the products on the Rocky mountain radar website. Yeah, I know you can say anything on the internet. Um, that's the thing. You can say anything on the internet and I mean, yeah, never agreed to a joint testing in person. Oh, I've never asked. I'm sure he would not want to do an interview with me. That would not go over well. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I doubt that would ever happen. <laughs> That's an interesting one. What's a good setup for Ontario, Canada? Um, the R3, uh, maybe something super stealth. Maybe uh, because you don't want anything on the windshield, they're pretty hardcore about it. Probably a remote, the Stinger and the Escort Maxi I360s. Those are going to be the most stealth uh, custom install detectors. The Net Radar DSP and the Redenso RCM are a little bit more detectable. Um, they're mostly stealth, but they could, I believe, get detected if the officer pulls up right behind you and you're running a rear antenna. Um, but yeah, if you hop on the forums, like Ross is saying, there's a ton of Canadians and they can give you great uh, great advice. Sometimes there's issues getting some of the detectors up in Canada. It's not quite as easy as up in the US. Um, but yeah. So anyway, ask on the forums. That's usually the best place for uh, like Canadian stuff or anything outside the US. I get tons of questions from you know all sorts of countries, Israel, uh, South America, the Middle East, all over the place. I'm like, I don't know, guys. That's somebody who... Drives, knows what you guys have. That's, yeah, that's tough. Um, are you testing Blinder? Paul is asking. Blinder, their HP 905. I used to have it before I had the ALP. It hasn't been updated in forever at this point. So the Escort Shifter Max, it's the new generation Blinder. Um, they don't necessarily publish that. Kind of like how the uh, Laser Shifter Pro uh, was the Laser Interceptor beforehand. Now they're actually going to, um, what's it called? Uh, to Blinder, they're sourcing them for their jammers. They make their own radar detectors, but the laser jammers are blinders uh, packaged and sold under the Escort name. And so the latest Blinder, it's the Escort ones that I'm going to be testing. Uh, Matt Smith, 5-Minute Fridays. Uh, I've been cutting those. They were just a little bit too stressful. And like I don't really like to have those time constraints of having to do something every week. I like to just kind of test things and release once they're ready. And with everything else I've got going on in the meantime, I've just decided to cut 5-Minute Fridays for I guess indefinitely. Maybe I'll do it later, but uh, I didn't really like feeling like come around Wednesday, Thursday. I'm like, oh man, I've been busy working on other stuff, but I got to shoot some five minute Friday episodes. So I didn't really like it that much. So I'm probably just going to cut it. Uh, B Ozzy, what's the best laser? ALP in general? Yeah, that's the typical recommendation. Um, in time, maybe the Escort or the TMG or the Stinger could be a good option. You know, that things are always changing. And so that's what testing is all about. That's why we do this to have some like clear data on the results. I mean, maybe the K40 will get really good someday. I don't know. That's why we test to actually see instead of just say, well, ALP is the best. So just get ALP, which is 
true, but I want to actually have like concrete, objective, hard data that shows why. And then of course, some of the stuff as far as like, well, I prefer the interface of this or those features are really useful, that kind of stuff too, besides just the performance. But yeah, I'll be doing an updated uh, comparison with all the jammers. And that's a big part of what all this testing is about. Uh, editing video can be stressful. I guess, yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily like having hard deadlines, but sometimes you've got those. If I'm like, I'm scheduling videos or there's a product about to be released, then I need to have stuff out at a certain time. But otherwise it's nice to just let's test and we'll make a video when it's ready, we release it. And then we move on to the next thing. It's nice to just kind of go with the flow as time allows. So I guess that's kind of one of the nice things about the YouTube stuff. Uh, oh, thank you, Christian. I appreciate that. Yeah. And thanks everybody for doing all the super chat stuff. That's nice. That's that supports me totally and like going out and you know doing the testing and then whether you use the money for making videos like this or for uh maybe picking up food for people tomorrow or something for the testing or baby stuff or whatever like yeah it totally helps me so thank you uh biohazardous any long range shots planned or typical city streets distances well we don't really have a ton of long flat straightaways i mean we have a lot of hills and curves and stuff here i mean in seattle so um it's tough to do like really long straightaways. I know there are some in like industrial parks or near some of the stadiums in some areas, they'll have like long straight roads uh, that I've used before in the past, but the one that I've used before, it's really far away now based on where I live now. So it's not convenient. Maybe there's another one that I could find, but the ones that I've been finding here are maybe a thousand, 1500 feet, kind of that range, nothing like two, 3000 feet. That would be cool to test, but yeah. Let's see, um, radar detectors. Have you guys watched the uh, the custom installed stuff? I'm curious to see like what you guys think as far as the testing. Not that it was a surprise, but you know, at least for me, the main thing with that is I was just happy to see some like test data with uh, uh, the K40, for example. I mean, we've long been saying K40, it's like kind of overpriced underperformer is how I think of it. And yeah, I mean, the results continue to show just that. I like some other things as far as the customer service is great. Uh, they're really friendly when you, you know, contact them. They're great. The people there are awesome. Um, it's just the performance isn't where I would want it to be, especially at the price point. And it's, I guess, good to have, uh, some like concrete definitive test results that just show that and compare it to everything else, you know? So that's what I'm most excited about. But, uh, yeah, Keith, was that a new stalker laser gun? Yeah, it's the XLR, uh, the XLR and the RLR are stalkers newest guns. Uh, posted on RDF. The testing, it's already on the forums. It's been up there all week. So, uh, oh, okay, yeah. Um, the Stinger fiber heads. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Crimped ends appear cheap. Let's pull them out. Need that. So, all right, so Stinger fiber optics. So this is kind of something interesting. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but I think it's worth taking a closer look at. So uh, the heads, I'm noticing they are a little bit different than uh, the previous gen fiber optics. Uh, the way they work is, if we just look at one of them real quick, uh, USB connector on one side, most all the laser jammer hardware, it's actually in this little box, which is gonna have to go somewhere. And then uh, this just runs out to uh, the fiber optic heads. Um, the crimps look fine. I mean, looking at it, I don't see any potential issues. I guess one of the toughest things is just making sure that uh, they're aligned properly. Um, they said that they need, uh, Stinger told me they want not straight and level like most jammers, but a five degree tilt up, which is kind of interesting. So I'm going to have to go and uh, figure out a good way to get these installed. Like I'm going to put two by the uh, license plate and they go actually pretty close together like this. Um, and then two by the driver's side headlight, two by the passenger headlight. So i got a set of triples like that. Um, but yeah, as far as the crimps, I mean, they look fine. I don't really see any issues with those. Maybe do this so that you guys can take a look too. get them in focus. So there you go. So there's a look at the heads. I'm not trying to block my face for privacy. I'm just trying to get the camera to focus right here. <laughs> so whip out your protractor. So they look fine. I don't really have any complaints against them. I mean, the main thing is, yeah, they're really compact and they are pricey. They're roughly twice the price of a comparably equipped ALP. So they're not cheap. But uh, if you're looking for maybe the stealthiest install possible and or your car really doesn't have a good place for installing jammers, you don't want to cut your grill or whatever, this could be an option. So that's, I think, what I'm most excited about. Uh, you can get it to integrate with the uh, Stinger VIP, which is what I'm going to do. Or uh, 
they're coming out with like a new stinger fiber or not a little strip. It's a little just strip about maybe that big or so, uh, which you put somewhere in your car. Um, and then there's also just, if you want an led, I guess there's no configuration or like control switch or JTK button or something, but you can have just an led and then I guess an auto JTK or something. I'm not sure how you can figure that, but if you want kind of like a K40 esque, just an alert led, you can do that too. Um, each box, let's see, has both a TX and an RX fiber. So there's RX and TX are like separate heads, separate things that plug into the uh, the red Stinger Laser Center. And then so, um, yeah, you just run like one TX and one RX and you run them side by side like this. They're not uh, self-contained into one package. They are the way they are with like a traditional head. And actually, speaking of traditional heads, why don't we grab a K40? Here's my uh, K40 bag. I haven't really looked at these too much. I think I've got the diffusers in here. No, this is just the radar stuff. Actually, here, let's grab the K40 diffusers. I'm gonna need them anyway. All right. It's another uh, closet in the bathroom there that I've been using for storing more stuff, but K40 diffuser optics. Take a look at these heads. Here's the CPU. So they're still in the box and the shrink wrap and everything. I haven't really messed with the laser side because I've been focused on uh, radar. So a uh, little plastic box, feels really light. Um, says K40 on it, great. Uh, looks like there's support for up to five heads. Uh, laser one, two, three, four, five. Take this off, I've got uh, the plastic covering here. I had a dream last night that I went and bought another K40 unit. I don't know why, but I went and bought another one. And I was like, just making sure that I could still return it and everything. I think I wanted to test like multiple copies just to make sure that uh, uh, there's still, what's it called? Like, you know, sample variation and all that. It didn't perform that well. So I think in the dream, I was like, let me get another one just to make sure, you know, even though it's the same as the windshield mounts I tested before. But yeah, I bought another K40 in my dream last night. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, anyway, take a look at the heads. So they're made by Adawave, huh? Korean company. Uh, so here's the heads. Looks like we've got uh, receivers over here. I presume our transmitters are there. Pretty tiny. I mean, similar in size and style to uh, ALP, TMG, Escort, what have you. But yeah, I mean, the install for this should be pretty straightforward. Just plug them in. Done. I mean, so heads one, two, three. Uh, I don't know why these ones have a little box for like L2 and L5. I'll have to read the documentation on that. But otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Looks like we've got a host to connect to the uh, main CPU. Um, and then I've got a USB port, which I hope is for updates. And speaking of which, going to make sure I get this updated too, just to have the latest and greatest whatever uh, K40 offers. So made in Korea. Yeah, made in Korea. So out of wave, most likely. Yeah, actually, do they have documentation on this? Let's see. Oh, yeah, just some paperwork stuff as far as wiring. Correct. There we go. Oops. So got uh, the mounts and stuff, which we can use. Do all the laser uh, jammers identify the gun? No, they do not. Uh, Escort does not. ALP does. Stinger does. TMG does. K40, I don't know. Um, the new one that I'm going to be testing, I don't think it does. So anyway, they got uh, dimensions and mounting information and just telling you to make sure the heads are straight and level, you know, pointed straight, not pointed out. So just basic mounting information. Yeah, okay, so the laser transmit diode is between, is behind there, the receiver diodes are behind there. Pretty standard, nothing there. Oh, at least they do say like, don't mount behind the grill and or follow contours of the vehicle. So that's good that they tell you that. Hopefully the installers uh, installing this stuff know that, but yeah, that, yeah. Ooh, let's see, used for parking in Texas. Yeah, a lot of these do support parking sensor functionality. Uh, well, actually, no, I know ALP does. I don't, uh, Escort, I think it ships in like detection only or something that's pretty common, but actually no, parking sensor functionality is only available in very few of these. Is it just ALP? Um, I think Blinder used to do it, LI used to do it, but I don't know about the, the latest and greatest ones. So, but which is fine, the parking sensor functionality kind of sucks. But it works. I mean, it works, just not very well. I don't really like it. Hey, buddy. 
<laughs> Dogs are chilling. Um, yeah. Oh, did a firmware update on my Max 360C and lost all of my settings. Aggravating. Actually, here. I've been meaning to do that, too. So, new update for the Max 360C. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it includes the auto JTK stuff yet. I know that's been something people have been asking about. Let's go ahead and try it real quick, see if mine updates. Apparently, the uh, new update available. Uh, I don't know what firmware it is. Actually, here, before we update, is it mark and mute, I believe? Just power it on real quick and see what I'm running. Uh, firmware 1.8. Okay. Let's update. So I'll let it hop onto Wi-Fi and uh, actually, no. I disabled it for my home Wi-Fi because you can only have one Wi-Fi hotspot, and it's currently paired to my uh, car's Wi-Fi, so I can't update it home. Oh, man. I was hoping to just update real quick. So I'm going to have to wait till I get in the car to update the 360C. Okay, I'll do that later. Uh, any plans to use JBV1 with the TMG? It's just a test for jamming. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's cool. If I was running it as my primary jammer, it would be cool. I've been using TMG lately. I've got my uh, Android sitting over there. Um, it's cool functionality. I like seeing that. So I'm glad that TMG is doing some stuff there with uh, JPV1. And then, of course, getting their standalone app, which is really cool. Uh, let's see. Parking mode. Nope. Working on an industry-first feature. Cool. Yeah. So I guess it's always kind of, at least for me, like, ALP is the best, you know, people say that, but I'm always looking for something unique. Like what is it about the other jammers that make it potentially a better choice than the ALP? Um, it would be tough to beat the ALP on jamming. ALP is generally pretty good about that. They're good about updates. They're good about uh, keeping you protected and that kind of stuff. And so maybe if, let's say if you can get close or equal at least to the ALP, then you got to have some other advantage, you know, whether it's maybe something more affordable, that's always a plus, especially once you start adding more and more heads, you know, the price can go up. Uh, the TMG, it's got Bluetooth and it's got a speaker built in, whereas the ALP, you got to pay $100 for each of those two options to get them, you know? Um, of course, it jams even with the base package, but if you want the features that the other ones include built in, you do have to pay more. So price can be a thing. Uh, Stinger, I think, is probably one of the most obvious ones with the super teeny tiny fibers. Uh, twice the price of an ALP, but for those of you guys who are like, I just want something that looks really good on my car, especially a more exotic car or whatever, that could be an option. Um, especially if you're running it standalone, then you can just run the Stinger fibers with whatever radar detector you want. You know, you don't have to necessarily run it with the VIP. You need a motorcycle so we can get the data. Getting a motorcycle isn't the issue. It's just a matter of like, well, running the uh, the production one. Um, and I've had people in the area already say like, hey, if, uh, if you want help with motorcycle testing, I've got a motorcycle, I'll come out and help. So that part is easy. It's just a matter of I don't want, I have no interest in riding a motorcycle. I mean, I have nothing against it. It's just never been a desire for me. So I'm not going to be getting one, but yeah, it would be cool to test it. Uh, let's see. It works terribly. It would help uh, where jammers are, are not legal. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to have a stealthy hidden for aesthetic purposes, or just you really don't want it to be seen. Stingers are nice. Um, as far as parking sensor, that would be cool. Tested a motorcycle today. One RX and one TX on the front. Awesome. Yeah. What guns did you test with? I figured that's kind of the way to go. Um, if you can get like the TX higher up on the fairing or something, that would be great. So yeah, one TX and one RX, I think is a good combination. Probably. Yeah, I guess better than uh, Dragon Eye and Stalker RLR. Awesome. Were you testing with a, uh, the compact or the full size uh, Dragon Eye Speed LiDAR? Good to hear that you're having good results. Um, yeah, and that's cool. Like full size, great. Yeah, so one of these, and I guess a variant of this. Yeah, with the ALP, generally you need three heads, three heads, triple quotes, three heads. <laughs> uh, but on a motorcycle, it's small. You have one head being the RX, the other one being the TX, and you can get by with the smaller ones. Yeah, that's a good question. Can the TNG jam more difficult guns with a single head per side on a motorcycle? That's a good question. I'm curious. So yeah, motorcycle stuff is a little bit different. Um, and it's good, of course, to have more options for motorcycles. Tough for me to like fully properly test and review and compare all that, but trying to get the information, I guess, as best as I can for you guys. 
Wish we can get an ALP test on a Model 3 with a low mounting points of the heads. Yeah, um, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that would be good to see that test done. Uh, VDH is saying rear was one RX and it only jammed the PL4. RLR and Drag and I were instant punch through. That makes sense, kind of knowing how the ALP works. You do need like the second, at least two heads typically. One's transmitting, one's receiving for the way it works. So typically you do need two heads uh, to jam the older gun or the newer guns, where the older ones can get by with like a single head. Um, yeah, that's a good point, Ross. On a motorcycle, you could stack the heads vertically. If you're using the TX head, you can do like a vertical install of the ALP for your uh, regular heads, which depending on the uh, design of the bike and where you attach the heads, would be very nice. Let's see, oh, we've been going for another hour. We can chat here all day. I need to eventually go and start getting my install stuff done. <laughs> Look around for more locations for tomorrow's test, but this is fun. We'll just kind of keep hanging out and chatting. And then uh, at some point I do need to eventually go and get to uh, more testing and install stuff. Uh, Benzman. Okay, so this comes up a lot. So let's talk about this. I switch cars frequently and use an R3. A laser jammer is not practical. Ever consider doing a laser detection test? I know it's not real world practical, but gives an idea of possibly catching scatter. No. No. I mean, I really think Waze is a better tool than that. Um, so let's talk about that. Uh, a couple years ago, I did a test and I put like four or five radar detectors in the windshield and let's just compare all of them. What I found is the results varied in sensitivity because if I'm testing, let's say, front license plate, I noticed the radar detectors on the center of the windshield did better than the radar detectors out on the outside. And so I would like swap placement of the different radar detectors and I would again find the ones closer to the center did better than on the outside. I'm like, well, okay, I was trying to get all of them at the same time, cluster them all together for just laser testing. That didn't work too well. For windshield mount test or for maybe running them one at a time. Thing is when you're running a laser gun, there's going to be a little bit of handshake and stuff, right? Like even if you're on a tripod holding as still as possible, the way to do that ideally, I guess would be like, hold the gun as still as possible, maybe on a tripod. I don't know how much uh, handshake you'd want to introduce. And then just kind of like do a whole bunch of runs and okay, there's going to be a little bit of vibration, whatever, different distances, different guns, blah, blah, blah. Um, actually, I want to fire up something else while we're talking about that. And just kind of like, sort of average out the results. Fire up the, uh, the R7 here, and then kind of go about it that way. It's not something that's super useful. I mean, you could do it. It would take a lot of time and a lot of guns and a lot of detectors. It would ultimately still wind up with the conclusion that even if it can detect it, you still need a laser jammer and Waze. Waze is a better tool than a radar detector is for jammer, but or for laser stuff but we would still ultimately wind up with the conclusion that you need a laser jammer to protect yourself. This, if it goes off, is a little bit more than a uh, speeding ticket notifier. The V1 is the best at laser detection. I've been running mine for the past two days or something. 10, 20 minute drive, I'm getting one to two laser falses every time from Mazdas or whatever. Like the thing, great sensitivity, but it falses all the time. Um, I don't think the V1 has a bunch of photodiodes. It just has a big, huge laser sensor on the front, uh, which does a good job of like funneling in the light and then very little filtering, I think is what the story is with that one. And so, yeah, great sensitivity. I just wish that the new V2 or whatever, the next version of the V1, they would add a little bit more filtering uh, and a little bit more, yeah, Mazda's Infinities and Volvos are the big three that I see with uh, the V1 laser falsing. Great sensitivity. I wish they would add more filtering and a little bit more kind of like pattern recognition in a sense to recognize the difference. Like Whistler does it, different pulse patterns between, you know, this pulse pattern and a Mazda and an Infinity, just to do something a little bit more sophisticated to help cut down on those annoying false alerts. And then we would have at least better sensitivity and alerting to scatter and all that stuff. But it's just not something that I personally find a good way to spend a ton of time and resources because it's not super useful, especially when there's a bunch of other things that I could really get to with my quite frankly, limited time. Laser detection testing on a radar detector is so far at the bottom of the list that it's like, I've never even put it on the list. So I tried it a couple years back. I didn't find it to be super, super helpful, but there's plenty of people on the forums who could do it and share the results. I'm, yeah, somebody could do it by all means. So just not me. Anyway, one thing that I wanted to do and why I fired up the R7 real quick, I saw some posts on the forum about, uh, True speed S, not alerting to the R7. So just give it a quick shot. Oh, well, yeah, let's turn it on. Laser. 
Yeah. Alerts, true speed apps. Uh, I am running uh, a new beta firmware on here. Um, it's 1.24, I think. Beta stuff. So I'd have to like go back and check with 1.22. I don't think there's been any uh, laser detection changes. 1.24 is just some other stuff that they're working on. Um, so I'm assuming 1.22 is the same, but yeah. Uh, oh, blend mount. I want to get this installed on my car too. I've got uh, the R7 blend mount. Can take a look at that. Here it is. Uh, it's going to be available in June. I think pre-order start at the beginning of June, but uh, here's what it's going to look like. So I've got the clip here. Got it labeled R7. And maybe you can see. I don't know. The light is right. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Just wrote R7 on it. But uh, slip it on, clicks into place, and it mounts right here. So we've got access to the button right there. Uh, so easy to remove. Pretty straightforward. And uh, unlike maybe the uh, Max 360C's mount, which connects here, this one is going to be hanging right more from like the middle of the detector. So it should do a better job as far as uh, vibration and balance and stuff. So testing this, um, just another thing I need to go throw in my car while I'm running other detectors. Uh, this is the final version, not a prototype. Uh, they're working on like mass production now, but this is what it's going to look like. And so, um, yeah, Darren, uh, thanks for doing the testing. You're welcome. And for taking care of the XLR. Yeah, it's good gun, by the way, You're kind of making me want one. It's, it's fun having all these guns here. And now I'm like, I want to get all these guns. They're all so cool. I'm like, yeah, I got the case there. So I'm kind of keeping track of it. Got all the batteries charged. But cool gun. I like it. It's pretty uh, solid and beefy. It's kind of similar to what I noticed with the Stalker 2 to where it's like a it's a hefty piece of hardware. The other ones feel kind of, they're not light, but they're more plasticky. Same thing with the Compact, uh, more plasticky. I mean, it feels light, but it is pretty comfortable to hold like this. Um, True Speed S, kind of cool to hold it like this. I still like this one. And I like the fact that it doesn't look like... I mean, something like this, it kind of looks like you're pointing a gun at people, which when you're testing out on the street or something can freak some people out. <laughs> Better than like a stock or two, which you're holding out like like that. Um, but yeah, this just looks like binoculars or something. It's very uh, unobtrusive or unintimidating or whatever the word is. So anyway, differences between laser guns. Yeah. Um, anyway, I should probably get going here and get to uh, the install before my wife starts heading home, uh, start getting the stuff ready in my car for tomorrow. So um, anyway, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Been hanging out here for about an hour. It's been uh, fun chatting with you and just kind of sharing all the stuff that's been going on. So uh, yeah, testing tomorrow. I'll be um, posting the results next week after the holidays. That should be good. Uh, should be quicker to get these results up online uh, than it was with the radar detector testing. Uh, the trickiest thing, of course, is just going to be getting everything lined up with the cameras getting all that stuff done. So it'd be good to get a little bit of practice with that in as well. I spend a lot more time with the radar detectors than I do with the laser side. So I don't have as much practice doing uh, all the laser stuff where I'm doing radar all the time. So I could use a little bit of practice there. I can admit, but uh, anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome Memorial Day weekend. I hope you guys have some fun plans, barbecues or time with friends and family or road trips or whatever you're up to. So hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Thanks so much for tuning in and hanging out. Hey, thanks Leon. I appreciate the uh, super chat. Really helps. I'll try to bring my uh, NEX 5T in a tripod. Awesome. Yeah. More cameras, more tripods. By all means, speaking of which, I got to pull out my tripods too to have uh, support for all the guns. But anyway, hope you guys have an awesome weekend and I will catch you later. Cheers. <laughs>